Hey everyone, today we're going to talk a little bit about letting some users start logging into our application. Uh, we are going to discuss communicating the state of our application between different components within the app. And we're going to start conditionally formatting our app a little bit based on the, uh, the logged in user state within our application. So if we go in our source folder and open up common services and go to the auth service this time, what we'll see is the auth service has this current user property, and it also has an array of users that exists in our system. Of course, this is an overly simplistic way of kind of construing a uh, user authentication scheme. Uh, but as mentioned in previous videos, I didn't want to kind of give the idea that we could entirely roll authentication from the front end. Uh, what I'll also say is that this auth service is going to be used to maintain the, uh, the state of our user in our application, uh, which is fine for this small project. Uh, but if you have a large project, uh, state management becomes a really tricky task. Uh, and there's a bunch of solutions out there for it, like Redux and uh, RxJS uh, that can help with that. Uh, the Aurelia core team, uh, specifically Vilden Softic, is uh, currently working on an Aurelia uh, single state store. Uh, this is not quite ready for prime time, but I'm really excited to see uh, what actually uh, comes of it. So uh, once that is released, I envision I'm going to do a tutorial trying to use that. But for now, I think we're going to be OK just using this auth service to log our users in, log our users out, uh, sign up new users, and then uh, additionally store the state of uh, the logged in user. So that being said, let's go ahead and pull this auth, auth service into our main application. So I'm actually going to switch over to the browser and say that, all right, let's just display the logged in state of our user or not logged in state uh, on the sidebar over here above tags. Uh, you know, I don't know if that's a perfect place to do it, but hey, that's what we're going to do now. So let's go into our application. Let's open up our app component, so the app.js and the app.html file. And within our app.js, let's go ahead and import the auth service. And let's inject it like we're already doing with post service. Great. And so if we look at our, uh, our auth service uh, file, we can see that this uh, current user is going to represent the state of our user at any time. So within our app.js file, our view model, we can perhaps in the attached lifecycle hook, maybe we'll just say, uh, we'll set the current user property of this, uh, this view model equal to the current user of our auth service. To our camel casing convention there. Great. So we can now use this information on our view to display the current user. So let's head over to our app.html file and let's scroll down and I will find the sidebar. And at the top of the sidebar, I'm just going to go ahead and maybe add a span and just say welcome. And we can add a template literal here that just says current user. And if our current user is null, like it most likely will default to, we can say current user or we'll just say guest. I'm gonna save that. Let's go back to our application now. And since it defaults to uh, not exist, it's just going to say welcome guest. Uh, and I'm actually going to go back and change the span to a paragraph to make it space a little better. 
Great, so that looks fine to me. Uh, we could, of course, format that however we wanted. But theoretically, if our user log is logged in, uh, this would, instead of being uh, guest, it would be the name of our logged in user. So how do we get a user to log in? Well, we would probably want to build out a login form. Uh, and that would be accessible by this login link in our nav bar. So let's do that now. Let's go ahead to our uh, command line and stop watching the app here. And we can actually just generate a login component. So let's say AU generate and we'll generate a component. We are going to call it the login component. And we've been putting our components thus far in the post subfolder but this is kind of a different animal. It's actually all part of our authentication scheme in a certain way. So let's go ahead and throw it in an auth subfolder. Great, so we've created the login component and I'm gonna head over to my code base. We can see there is now this auth folder within the source folder and we've got our login component. So let's start working with that now. Let's open the login HTML and the login JS. And we see it's just got all of our good default uh, component uh, information. So we have a class with a constructor in the view model and in the HTML, we've got our template just uh, showing this easy string, uh, this easy template literal. So let's go ahead and take out this message and we can just say, all right, we're gonna log in here and we are going to need a login form. And within that form, uh, I will go back to the auth service and just take a quick look at the uh, login method here. Uh, unlike logins that you've seen before, this login only takes a name. And what it does is it says, if that name is within our array of existing users, then we are going to count that as correctly authenticated. So again, really reiterating that I'm not trying to show you quote unquote, the way to authenticate a user. I'm not going to deal with passwords right now because I think that might give the wrong idea. Uh, so let's just go ahead and authenticate a user if he or she provides a name that exists within uh, this user's data store. So that being said, I'm going to go back to my login view. And so all we really need here is an input uh, and this is going to be a text type input. Uh, the name doesn't really matter. Uh, perhaps we will have placeholder here and that will say uh, your name. And then at that point, all we need is a button to say login and our form. So once that button is clicked, we need something to happen. So we are going to delegate the submit of that form to the login method of our associated view model. Let's hop over to the view model. Uh, we can take this that message out of the constructor and let's create our login method. Okay, so what's gonna happen within this login method? Well, we're gonna actually need to access the login method of our auth service. So we are going to have to import and inject the auth service. So let's go ahead and bring in uh, the dependency injection container. And additionally, let's bring in our auth service. Use our decorator syntax. And within our constructor, we also need to include it. Great, and so now we can use our auth service in our login method. So again, let's take a look at that auth service. And when we access the login method, all we need to provide is the specified name. So, well, how do we get that? Let's go back and take a look at the 
login.html view. And currently this input just has a placeholder and a type. So what we need to do is, uh, if you remember from before with our uh, binding conventions, we can just say value bind equals name. And so now this, the name property, oh, value.bind equals name, great. So the name property of our view model will now be in sync with uh, this HTML element. So again, back to our view model, we can now say this.authService.login. We can take the name property, and since this is a promise, we can say then. And let's just take a quick peek again at the auth service and see what's returned. Uh, so if this is successful, what it does is it sets the current user of the object equal to pr the provided name. Again, this is the state management aspect here so that the current user property of this auth service is uh, equal to the provided name. And then it'll just go ahead and resolve with uh, an object where it's just the user specified with name. So we can just kind of, maybe we'll just console log this, uh, this user uh, property of the returned object. And then of course, if this doesn't work, we reject a, an error and the message of that error is that the credentials are invalid. So let's both uh, handle the successfully resolved case and the reject case. So going back over to my login view model, this is the successful case. Let's go ahead and just say console.log data.user. Okay, but then we wanna catch the errors and uh, perhaps we'll just console log the error message. Great, so I think we've done a pretty good job of creating this component. Uh, next, let's go ahead and set up our router to be able to access this component. So we'll go back to our app view model, our app.js file, go down to our router configuration, and we can just go ahead and copy one of these routes. And I will call this the login route. And the module ID, so it's location in our, in our file structure is at auth login and the title can simply be login or perhaps that's more appropriate as two words i don't know but we'll just leave it like that uh, that'll be how we get there and then within our app.html view let's update our navigation bar to actually link to that location so let's scroll to the top and on line nine here we have our login link so now we can actually specify what that link is and that's just going to go to the route that is named login. I will save all that. I'll go back to uh, my console and I will again start watching the application. Okay, I'm gonna open my browser and here is the application. I'll give it a refresh and I will click the login link at the top. Okay, great. So we have our really, really basic login form here. I can go ahead and open the console. It's Control Shift J if you're using Chrome. And let's try some stuff here. So if I actually go back to my code base, I'm going to go to the authservice.js file, our auth service, and see that our current users are Nick Shally and Jane Doe. So perhaps I'll try one of those first. I'm going to try Jane Doe and click login. Great, and so within our console, we can see that we've logged Jane Doe. And if I go back to my login view model, well, that's what we would expect for a correct login. So that's actually looking pretty good. Now let's try the case where I would get an error. And that case is if we had a username that we did not recognize. Again, let's open up that browser. And so maybe we'll try John Doe. Let's click login. Ah. Perfect, we get invalid credentials, which is the error message that we would expect. Very cool. So uh, let's handle both of these scenarios. Let's first talk about invalid credentials. We probably know how we wanna handle that. We basically want to have uh, an error property of our view model. And if that exists, we can display an error message, specifically the one that's returned from our server 
to our user. So let's quickly go ahead and implement that. I will just steal the, uh, the view code for that from one of my other views. So I can go into post and perhaps I'll go view.html and I will take the alert here and I'll just copy that on over to my login.html and I'll put it between my uh, header element and my form. So let's go over to our view model and set up the error message to actually populate. So first, when this component is activated, so maybe we will add an activated lifecycle hook. Oh, well, it's actually activate. Uh, we can say that this error equals null. And we can also default this to null within the login method that we added to, so that every time we click login, we have a chance for this error to not exist. But if we end up uh, rejecting from the, uh, the promise, we can then say this.error is our returned error message. Give that a save. And so now we can go back over to our application and try logging in as John Doe, who doesn't have an account. Ah, invalid credentials, perfect. But if we do Jane Doe login, that goes away and we console log Jane Doe. Great. So that's great and everything, but perhaps once we log in successfully, well, we don't want to just sit at our login form. We probably want to actually navigate to uh, some other area. We probably want to go back maybe to our home page. So let's do that. On our uh, successful case here, we're going to navigate to our home page rather than logging that uh, Jane Doe has, has logged in here. So how are we going to do that? Well, what we can actually do is go ahead and import the Aurelia router here. Uh, we can use our dependency injection to make sure that we're using the same instance of our router. And then we can navigate to our home route. So let's just go ahead and do that now. So we can import the uh, router from and this is from the Aurelia router. Great. And we can inject this router. And then what we can do is instead of console logging the user data, we can say this.router. And we can use the navigate to route method so we'll go navigate to route. And we simply uh, have to specify the route information here, but this is going to be a pretty simple one. So we just have to say, hey, we're navigating home. So again, our successful case, instead of uh, actively doing something with that data, we can just navigate to route home. Uh, and then if uh, things don't go correctly, we can set the error message and that'll display to our user. So let's give this a shot. Let's first try again as John Doe, log in. Okay, invalid credentials, that's what we'd expect. But now if I try Jane Doe and log in, ah, success, and we are navigated back to our home screen. Awesome, that's exactly what we wanted to happen. But uh, you may be noticing that we had configured our sidebar to say welcome current user, but it still says welcome guest. And that may be perplexing to some of you who are a little bit less familiar with the single page application world, but what's happening is all of our logic happened within this, uh, this router view here. This sidebar has never changed the entire time. So if I go back to my code for the application uh, view model, so our app.js file, and I scroll up here and look at line 14, this.currentUser is set to this.authService.currentUser only when our app component is attached. So this is never going to refresh uh, unless we actively tell it to. And one way that Aurelia gives us to do that is to use something called the event aggregator. And this is pretty cool. So what we can do 
is within, again, our login.js uh, view model, we can pull in the Aurelia event aggregator. So let's do that now. We are going to import event aggregator from Aurelia event aggregator. We can inject it. And I'll just use this dot EA for short. And then, so what we can do is we can actually publish to this uh, event aggregator. So we can say this dot EA and use this publish method. Let's spell that correctly though. So we can use this publish method and we can publish to user and the value perhaps we'll want to use is data.name. So what we can do then is we are publishing and within anywhere that we want to get the update of this information, we can use the event aggregator and actually subscribe. So uh, accordingly, let's go over to our app view model. Uh, again, let's bring in our event aggregator. Go ahead and inject it. And then so when, when we uh, attach the component, not only do we want this dot current user to equal the uh, current user of the auth service at that time, but what we can do is we can then use the event aggregator to uh, go ahead and subscribe to the uh, uh, the updated user that we created before. So we can say this dot event aggregator subscribe. Uh, what are we subscribing to? The user, because if I once again go over to my login.js, uh, we're publishing to user. So we are subscribing to user and then what we can use here is a function and say, all right, this information is going to be our updated user. So there's a couple things we could do here. We could say this dot current user equals the user, because again, if we go back to our login view model, we are publishing our user's name uh, or, uh, and debatably better, we can rely on our single data store and just say, uh, this dot current user equals this auth service current user. Again, anytime someone logs in now, the event aggregator is saying there's new user data and anywhere else that we have the event aggregator subscribing to user, uh, for example, within our app component, uh, we can now access that information. Great, so I'm gonna save this and let's give this a, another try now. And so we are not logged in because our app refreshed. So let's do a login and let's log in as Jane Doe. Let's hit login. Hey, and our sidebar now says, welcome Jane Doe. That's exactly what we wanted. Fantastic. So that being said, let's go ahead and make sure that we are uh, implementing the event aggregator to its uh, uh, as correctly as possible. So what would be correct is since we are subscribing within this attached lifecycle hook, uh, we should also within our detached lifecycle hook, uh, we should go ahead and dispose of that subscription. So uh, we can create a new detached lifecycle hook and uh, let's go ahead and store this uh, subscription in a property. So, so we can say subscription equals this dot event aggregator subscribe. And so we can then within our detached lifecycle hook say this dot subscription. Yeah, let's just dispose of this uh, subscription when we don't need it anymore. Uh, so that's a good way to clean up that uh, event aggregator subscription, no problem. So let's go ahead and just give our application a refresh and make sure this is all working. 
Uh, again, since this is in-memory storage, whenever I refresh my application, it basically logs this out. Uh, if you didn't want it to do that, you could uh, kind of edit the auth service to uh, basically include maybe local storage to maintain your, your uh, state information. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do that, but we're not really worried about that right now. So let's go ahead and log in. Let's log in as Jane Doe. Great. And so welcome Jane Doe. Everything seems to be working well. But so now we have this current user state information. Maybe we can leverage that for some other uh, functionality or some other display within our system. Uh, namely, I'm thinking about this navigation bar. We now have this current user property that is either null or equal to a person's username. And we can use that information to decide what displays at the top here. So let's go ahead and do that. And we already actually know how to do this. If we go into our app view, uh, we're already familiar with if binds. So let's use that. Uh, the home page is going to exist no matter what, but the login page is only going to exist if you are not already logged in. And by exist, I mean the, the link to the login page. So what we can say is if.bind, uh, is uh, not current user. So if our current user is null, then we can see login. Same deal with our sign up link. If current user is null, we can see sign up. Uh, but otherwise, if you are only if you are logged in, you should see this ability to create a new post. Additionally, only if you are logged in should you be able to log out. So we can start using this information to conditionally display these links. Let's go back to our uh, application in the browser. And since it's refreshed, uh, since I am logged out right now, I am a guest user, I no longer see the ability to create a new post. And I also no longer see the ability to log out. That's pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in. And I'm gonna log in as Jane Doe again. Great. And we can see our links have changed now. now. Now what's available is the option to create a new post and additionally the option to log out. So, well, we don't want to do new posts quite yet. Let's finish out this authentication scheme. Uh, so I think we're going to want to focus on logging out now. So, well, how might we do that? We're going to leverage again our, uh, our auth service, which if we go back to the code, our auth service has a logout method. And all it really does is uh, sets this current user equal to null. Uh, if there's some sort of error, then we can have a message. Uh, otherwise, it just tells us that it's successful. So let's go back to our app.js. And we can create a logout method within here. So let's just say logout. And we are going to use our auth service. And we'll just say log out. Uh, this should succeed, but uh, we can still kind of handle the data. You know, maybe we'll just log uh, that it was successful. Uh, or if there's an error, well, yeah, we can catch that. We might as well uh, let the user know that there is an error. Uh, in the process of logging out. So this is a pattern that we've been using. Uh, so great. So log out will do that. Uh, one thing we might also want to do is to notify anywhere else in the app that we've logged out. So let's go back to our uh, login.js and say, okay, let's again publish information uh, to user that says we've logged out. So I'm going to go back to my app.js and we can just say publish in user null. Again, that's maintaining the state. And what, what you're going to see is that since we are publishing this information to user, we are going to catch that in our subscription uh, that we declared in our attached method. And accordingly, our current user is going to change, which is then going to change the welcome message. And it's also going to change the navigation bar. So let's give that a shot. Oh, 
One thing I did forget though is to actually trigger that when the menu item is clicked. So go into the app view and uh, what we can do is within this uh, a tag, we can just say click delegate and we are going to delegate that click to the logout function. Easy enough. So open the browser. Let's log in as Jane Doe. Great, so we're logged in. Uh, we have our option for new posts. We also have our, op uh, our option to log out. So let's give log out a click. And I clicked it and now it says welcome guests and it has, has our login options now. So we are really successfully um, executing uh, this authentication as, as simple and unrealistic as it is. Uh, let's go ahead and try it with my name here, do a login, again, correct information, our nav bar changes and I can log out. Very cool. So, so far we've used our auth service to log our users in, we've used it to log our users out, and then we've used the very cool Aurelia event aggregator to communicate information around our app. So uh, one final thing we might wanna do is to, if I click login at the top of my page here, well, it's not the active item in my nav bar, but it really should be. And this isn't necessarily associated with authentication, but I'm kind of noticing it now. So let's clean that up real quick. Uh, what we can do is look at our view, our app.html, and see that, all right, active is hard-coded uh, into our application for the home link, but that's not always going to be true. What we can do is access a property of our router to test whether or not the uh, the active route is uh, is actually the home. And the way we can do this uh, is by conditionally displaying active. So what we can say is if the router's uh, current instruction config name, if that equals to home, again, this is the, uh, the name that we specified within our router, then we are going to be able to say, all right, this is our active route. Otherwise, eh, we just don't need any information here. And we can space this out a little more to make it a little uh, more eloquent. And so, great, we can actually do that now with our login as well. Um, uh, and I'll save the other ones because we don't really have those links yet, but I'm going to just quickly uh, copy this logic over. And instead of saying home, this is going to be the login page. I'll save that now. Again, this router is uh, in our view model. I can go to our app.js and uh, Oh, it's actually not in our view model. So within our configure router, I should say this.router equals router. Uh, and now we can access it as a property of our view model. Uh, so if I go back to my application, uh, we now see that login is highlighted because the name of our active route is login. If I click home, home is highlighted. So now that really looks like a navigation that we'd expect. Awesome. So we have successfully implemented some really, really basic authentication, but I think you can start seeing how this flow might work in a more complex application. Thanks a lot for following along and I will talk to you next time.